There's been a lot of news lately about the shortage of protective equipment for healthcare workers during the virus pandemic, and especially the shortage of masks like this one. Lots of folks are sewing cotton masks, but since not many people sew anymore, I wanted to create a mask that could be made out of uh, materials that are easy to find, that didn't require any special skills or special tools, and something that would hopefully perform nearly as well as one of these manufactured N95 masks. So this is what I've come up with after a few evenings of tinkering. Um, I've been calling it the Moo Mask because <laughs> it looks a little bit like a cow's nose. Um, it's made out of filter fabric, which is folded and stapled together with a couple of rubber bands to loop over your ears and then a bit of wire across the nose covered with some tape. So I'll go through this step-by-step, -step, show you how to make these masks, and uh, I'll be as concise as I can be here and I'll provide additional information at my website. The filter fabric itself comes out of an ordinary, everyday furnace filter. There are a few different kinds of furnace filters that you can buy, and we're looking for the kind that has a white pleated polyester fabric in sort of a cardboard frame like this. I bought this one at a local big box home improvement store a few days ago. There are different brands and different sizes. The width and the height of the filter aren't really critical, but the mass will be easier to make if the thickness is either four inches or five inches. This one is 20 inches by 25 inches by four inches. I spent about $25 on it and it'll yield enough material for about 45 masks. These filters aren't hard to find. They're available at most hardware stores, but if you can't get out to shop right now, you can order the filter and any of the other supplies online. So I'll put links to everything at my website. Before we start making the masks, I should probably get into the weeds on filters a little bit. Furnace filters are rated according to a MERV number, which is an acronym for Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. And that number just indicates how efficiently the filter removes contaminants from the air. For these masks, we're looking for a MERV 11 filter, which is towards the high end of residential filters. The packaging for the one I'm using today says it's effective against 95% of airborne particles from 0.3 to 10 microns. And I think that puts this fabric in the same ballpark as the material used in N95 masks. The highest rating that you're likely to find in a residential filter is MERV 13. And those are advertised as being effective against 99% of particles down to 0.3 microns rather than 95. I tried actually making some masks with the MERV 13 fabric, but it was just too difficult to breathe through. In addition to the filter, you're going to need some staples, two rubber bands for each mask, a little steel wire, and some duct tape. And I'll talk about each of these a bit more as I'm putting the mask together. The tools are all things you probably already have. You'll need something to cut the fabric. Um, you can use the scissors for that, obviously, but you'll get better, quicker cuts with a straight edge and a knife. I just use a, a normal utility knife with a sharp blade and a self-healing cutting mat. You also need a marker, a wire cutter, I'm just using needle nose pliers, and a stapler. Again, I'll put links for all of this on my website. The first step is removing the fabric from the filter frame, but I'm not going to show that whole process. It's pretty straightforward. I've had good luck with cutting around the end of the box about an eighth of an inch from the edge and then removing both ends. Once you've got that done, you can pretty much pull everything apart. The ends of the pleats though are glued to the box, so you need to have a little bit of patience and, and cut that all apart with a utility knife. There's no need to be real careful. There's a wire mesh that's lightly bonded to the fabric to help it keep its shape, and once you've got the fabric out, you can just strip that mesh right off. The fabric for each mask is just a simple eight inch square cut from the larger piece that I took out of the filter. And that was a four inch filter that had a pleat along here. So we end up with this fold going right through the center of our square. And once we start folding things up, that fold is gonna come in handy. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but this fabric actually has a smooth side and a slightly fuzzy side. It's best to cut the squares so that that fold is pointing up when the fuzzy side of the fabric is also facing up. And that'll ultimately put the smooth side of the fabric towards your face so the mask will seal up better. Now, once I've got this thing cut out, I need to mark a few points on it to guide the folds. So I've drawn a diagram that shows the locations of those marks. I'll walk you through the layout here, but you can also download that diagram at my website. To make things a little easier on myself, I made this template that's based on that diagram. And if you're making a lot of masks, which hopefully you are, having a template like this is going to save you a lot of time. 
it's got these little cutouts where each of the marks goes and then the two bottom corners are cut away just to make it a little bit easier to line things up. If we fold this back, you'll see that that fold goes right through the center here, right underneath this line. So we'll start marking there. Point A1 is right on top of that fold and A2 is the same. And then B1 is halfway between A1 and the top corner. Point B2 is halfway between A2 and the top corner. C1 is three quarters of an inch up from the bottom, three quarters of an inch in from the side. C2 is the same. D1 is two and a half inches in from the side and an inch up from that fold along the center. D2 is an inch up from the fold, two and a half inches in. And then E1 and E2 are directly above those two points along the top edge. Now that was a lot to throw at you very quickly. But again, this whole diagram is available at my website. Now, before we get into the last couple of steps of folding everything up and stapling it together, let's go back and take another look at this N95 mask. This mask has a pliable metal strip across the top here. And the purpose of that strip is to allow the mask to conform to that hollow between your nose and your cheek. Without that little piece of metal pushing the filter down, you'd end up with a gap back here and the mask wouldn't seal up very well. So we can do the same thing on our mask with a little bit of wire. This is um, 19 gauge annealed steel wire that works really well for this. It's flexible, but it also holds its shape really well if you twist it around. And you can find it at just about any hardware store for a couple of bucks for a spool like that. Um, if you can't find it or you can't get it, a paper clip will work in a pinch. So we'll go back to our fabric here in our template and I've got a little two and a half inch long piece of that wire that I cut and a piece of duct tape that's a half inch wide and three inches long and I'll mount that to the mask by just flipping it over sticking the wire onto the back of the duct tape and then using E1 and E2 these two marks at the top of the mask for my guide I'll Put it down just like that and I just hold it back a little bit from the edge so that the tape doesn't irritate your nose. Now going back to our template or to our diagram, we'll see that there are three folds marked on here. There's this middle fold which has been there all along and there are these two diagonal folds, one from B1 to D1 and one from B2 to D2. If we look at the fabric, that's from here to here and from here to here. Now this fold across the middle sticks up like that and I want these two folds to do the same thing. So I'll form those by just pinching the fabric at those two points. So at D1 and B1, I pinch that to create that fold. And then I'll crease that out, starting at D1 and creasing it out to B1. And then on this side, I'll pinch at D2 and B2 Flip that over and crease from B2 going out to B2 at the edge. Now back to the template. What I want to do now is I want to get these three points on top of one another. So I'll use the fold at the middle to pick up A1 and I'll bring that down and put it right on top of C1. And then I'll pick up B2 using the new fold and I'll bring that down and I'll put it right on top of the other two. Now if I pick that up, you can see I've made sort of a V shape here. And now these three points are right on top of one another. That's B1 on top of A1 on top of C1. And I need to get a staple through here to hold this all together. But I've got actually five layers of material, some of which are held back from the edge. So I need to make sure that I get the stapler in far enough to get all of those layers. And I also don't want to staple from this side because this is, this is the outside of the mask and that'll put the staple points on the inside of the mask where we don't want them. So I'll flip that over and I'll grab my stapler and I'll push it in far enough to get into all five layers. And then you can see I've sort of centered it right on that V as symmetrically as I can and put a staple in there. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll bring point A2 down to C2. And then I'll bring 
B2 down on top of C2. And this time I have to kind of twist that around a little bit so I get that same V. It's starting to get three dimensional, so it's a little harder to work with, but I can get that same V, flip it over again, put my stapler in there far enough so that it's over all five layers and nicely centered on the V and put a staple in there. Now you can see it's starting to look a little bit like the cow's nose. And I can just start fussing with these folds a little bit so that things tidy up a little bit. Just tuck everything in good from the inside. And here you can see we start to get that that cow nose shape. Now we need to attach the rubber bands. And these rubber bands that I have here are about seven inches long. And they're probably a little bit long. Six inches would probably be better. And thinner is better than thicker. And the way we attach those is we just lay them across these two triangles and fold those triangles over like tabs, just like that. And then we'll just put a staple in each one. On the other side, fold the triangles over. staple in each one. Now the last step is to just bend this wire just in a soft curve here and whoever ultimately wears it is probably going to need to adjust that a little bit and then I bend the ends up a little bit just so they don't jab your cheeks. And there you have it. There's your moo mask. To put the mask on you just loop these rubber bands over your ears. But as I said before, these seven inch rubber bands are probably too long for most folks. I've got a gigantic noggin and they're too big for me. So I just put a little knot like that in the end on each side and that works really well. Obviously you can move that knot in or out to make different sizes. And then you can adjust the wire at the nose so you get a nice comfortable seal up here. And that's really it. Um, it might seem a little daunting from the video, but I think once you get started, um, you'll find that you can probably make a dozen or so in an hour. So I encourage everybody to try it. I'm sure some people will want to make these for themselves, um, but I would hope that anyone who makes one for themselves also makes a whole pile of them for healthcare workers and first responders and other folks who are out on the front lines of this epidemic. The more those folks have, the less we will need. So. Please spread this around, email it out, post it to your social media, tell people you know. I'd love to see hundreds or even thousands of these things made so we can help keep the infection rate down and all get back to our normal lives as soon as we can. So thanks everybody, stay healthy and be kind to one another.